So there's uh, some new information that just came out in regards to the origin of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is a piece in Vanity Fair. They say, in major shift, NIH, National Institute of Health, admits funding risky virus research in Wuhan. A spokesman for Dr. Fauci says he has been, quote, entirely truthful, but a new letter belatedly acknowledging the National Institute of Health's Support for virus-enhancing research adds more heat to the ongoing debate over whether a lab leak could have sparked the pandemic. Huh. Isn't that interesting? So, I'll just read you this one part of the article. This gives you the gist of it here. On Wednesday, the NIH sent a letter to members of the House Committee on Energy and Commerce that acknowledged two facts. One was that EcoHealth Alliance, a New York City-based nonprofit that partners with far-flung laboratories to research and prevent the outbreak of emerging diseases, did indeed enhance a bat coronavirus to become potentially more infectious to humans, which the NIH letter described as an unexpected result of the research it funded that was carried out in partnership with the Wuhan Institute of Virology. The second was that EcoHealth Alliance violated the terms of its grant conditions, stipulating that it had to report if its research increased the viral growth of a pathogen by tenfold. So in other words, they did increase um, the viral growth of the pathogen by tenfold, and they didn't report it, so they tried to hide it. Listen, dog. Um, remember not that long ago when Jon Stewart went on Colbert's show, and he was joking and effectively saying, well, obviously this thing came from the Wuhan lab. Why was he making that argument? Why was he saying that? Because it would be a phenomenal coincidence if a very lethal bat coronavirus didn't come from Bat Coronavirus Research Central, which happens to be located in the same city that the outbreak started. Now, is it impossible? Well, no, of course, if there's wet markets there and the wet market theory, if the evidence lined up with the wet market theory, then it's like, okay, maybe it is the wet market. But what Stewart was push pushing back on was this certitude in the media that it's racist and wrong and dumb to say it came from the lab when it obviously came from the wet market. Now, that certitude was unearned. That arrogance was unearned. But the reason why the media was so dead set on uh, shutting down the lab theory was because Donald Trump was one of the original people who floated that, hey, this may have come from a lab. And so it was a backlash effect because, of course, the media hates Trump. And they were saying, not only is that incorrect, that's also racist. Now, I will say, there was an implication, generally speaking, when right-wingers made the argument that it came from a lab, that it was this nefarious thing that China wanted to release on purpose as, like, an act of war. That part of the lab theory is beyond ridiculous. Of course, China didn't want that to happen, because a lot of their own population got the virus, and a lot of their own population died. Obviously, if it came from the lab, it was a mistake that it got out of the lab. That's true. But the idea that perhaps it came from the lab, the idea that that's absurd, is dead wrong. And now the more evidence we see, the more we realize, hey, it's likely that it, it did come from the lab. So we had, remember when I covered the story, it was on, um, there was a CNN segment where the former head of either the FDA or the CDC, I think the CDC, came out and said, it is my uh, personal opinion, based on the evidence I've seen to this point, that it is very likely the virus came from the lab. This was not a person who's prone to conspiracy theories. This is not a person who's prone to um, hyperbole or anything like that. This is a sober, reasonable, you know, science-minded expert who was on the front lines of this thing. And he came out and said, hey, man, just so everybody knows. So when I looked at that, I was like, oh, okay. Well, because to that point, I thought it definitely came from the wet market, too. When I saw that, I went, oh, so this isn't just right-wing crank st stuff that perhaps it came from the lab. And then now again, the more we learn, the more we realize it very likely did come from the lab. Now, I'm not an expert. I'm not going to give you guys any definitive conclusions here. That's not my job. My job is to give you the evidence, give you the data, tell you what the new information is, and you guys make your own mind up, or you remain agnostic. But what I will say is this, because this is my wheelhouse. Remember the reaction from uh, mainstream media and the social media giants where th it was floated, hey, we should ban anybody who says it did come from a lab, that that's misinformation, uh, that it's racist, that it's conspiracy theory. So ban anybody who says it came from the lab. Well, now look, the more evidence we get, the more we realize maybe it did come from the lab. It's likely it did come from the lab. 
So uh, this is a cautionary tale about social media censorship, about having a ministry of truth. Oftentimes, we don't know the facts right away. Oftentimes, it takes time. Oftentimes, we live in a permanent gray area where the world is not black and white and we never get certain answers to certain questions. How can you have a ministry of truth that is right 100% of the time and why is it even okay, even if they were right 100% of the time, which they're not, why is it okay for them to decide who gets axed and who doesn't based on their own preferences and their own beliefs and their own biases and their own reading of the situation? Because you guys know this if you watch this show, the elite media types are often wrong and wrong in the most egregious ways. They, they were wrong to be certain that lab leak was stupid. They were wrong on Russiagate. They were wrong on the Iraq war, on Syria on Iran. There was just a Wall Street Journal article that said Iran's going to get a nuke and by the way, they're probably going to use it on us in a first strike attack. What? What? So they get to spread misinformation nonstop. And by the way, they get rewarded. That's the way the algorithm works. Certainly how it works on YouTube. Doesn't matter what CNN puts out there. Doesn't matter what tripe Fox News or MSNBC put out there. Whatever they put out there, by definition is viewed as an authoritative source saying an authoritative thing. Whereas on this show, the track record I have is much better. I'm right about way more stuff. But since I'm opinionated and I'm an independent outlet, I'm a new media outlet, I'm one guy with, who's a jackass with a microphone, well, we don't know what he's gonna say, so push him to the side, derank him in the algorithm, make sure his stuff doesn't get to new people. Well, now, you know, again, perfect case in point. Perfect case in point. More information comes out, the NIH admits in a report, hey, there was risky virus research going on that we helped fund. No accountability, no consequences, no justice. And we'll continue to go down this path of more censorship, more deplatforming, more top-down uh, authoritarian approaches to dealing with social media and dealing with outsider voices. And they'll never learn the lesson because the point is not to get things right. The point is to control the narrative as much as possible. And here we are. So, uh, if you were maybe on the fence in this conversation about, I don't know, misinformation is a really big problem, so obviously we should do something about it, hopefully this changes your mind. That oftentimes, the thing that's originally viewed as wild misinformation and conspiracy theory actually turns out to either be likely true or probably true, and so you can't just go around censoring things that you personally don't agree with for a variety of reasons. And again, I couldn't come up with a, a more clear example of it if I made it in a lab, no pun intended.